Friday I did the workout and I ended it in 1004, which given the training I've been doing, I felt content. And I was like, man, I don't want to redo that. Fast forward to Monday, about nine o'clock, I did it again. Ended at 947. And then I'll be honest, Kyle Bernier did it and was a little faster than that. So I decided to get a little fired up. Attempted again at 2.30 in the afternoon with a little, a little break. Got five rounds in, realized I should just stop. And then went home, just ate, hung out with the family for a few minutes, came back. And so this is like the three and a half attempt. Three and a half. Tries three and a half attempts, three and a half. So just on this day alone, Travis has done one and a half attempts. So he did the workout in the morning, got 947, then he went and saw Kyle Bernier do it, did half of it again. So that's just on this day, he's already done 120 snatches, 150 burpees at a competitive intensity. If you add in his Friday's workout, another full attempt of it, that means he's at 200 snatches and 250 burpees. And then just say Travis warms up pretty extensively, another 20 or 30% warming up. That means he's probably done like 240 total snatches and 300 burpees over the course of four days, which in and of itself, I think is a pretty impressive feat. And uh, I think it just highlights what these elite athletes do at the highest level of this sport to maintain their, um, their place at the top level of the sport. And Trav's, I guess, also just doubly impressive that he runs his gym, he's got three young kids all under five, his wife works full time, so it's not like she's at home being a nanny, so he kind of shares parent, parental responsibilities, so this is a pretty impressive performance to do this. From a strategy perspective, the approach that we had in this workout really all kind of came down to the way that you see him doing burpees right here. So. Guess kind of like a story time. Last week, last year, 19.4, or really earlier this year, 19.4 had the three rounds for time of snatches and bar facing burpees, then a three minute rest, then three rounds of bar muscle ups and bar facing burpees. And that workout, the pace of your burpees was a much bigger overall component of the workout. So you had to actually do your burpees quicker. They couldn't be smooth and rhythmic. And first time Travis did it, and the second time, that workout just kind of wrecked Travis. So he worked with Brandon on adopting a very low burpee strategy where he would go over the bar really low and stay low so that he could drop down into his next burpee. And when we talked about it, I was like, look, you're losing this workout because of the back half, round six, seven, eight, nine of the burpees. And when you did 16.5 and you'd done these workouts with tons of burpees, you stayed tall so that you could breathe. And I think also just, you know, you can kind of tell by looking at Trav, he's kind of a leg heavy athlete. He's got these big quads. He's not super upper body driven like some of the other athletes in the sport. So I told him to stay taller, jump up and land on his feet, which might be a little bit slower of an earlier strategy, He's still moving at a quick pace and he's still trying to move quickly, but he's just doing them technically different. And then you'll see by the end of this overall workout that he's able to maintain that and keep those quick transitions because he's able to just take advantage of what he's really good at breathing. So I think that kind of highlights that there's a lot of different ways to approach this sport. It's not necessarily just like we put out the uh, video analysis where you kind of go through and you look at all your transitions and you look at all of the t places that you lost time. But one of the things you also have to take into consideration is what's the technical approach that you're gonna use for this workout. So for, you know, most people just in general, this is a, a feat that's impossible to have handled this much training volume and still be able to put out an intense effort. But let's just say for you, instead of three and a half attempts over the course of four days, you're doing two attempts. So if you're doing that, you might wanna take into consideration just your overall pace strategy, but also take some time maybe on Saturday or on Sunday to work on the technical aspect of how you're getting through things. So Trav obviously has this power snatch technique where he kind of hinges over, pulls itself up, no hip contact. It's not really like a, a technical snatch, but it's just the way that high level athletes in the sport barbell cycle. And if you watch almost all their videos, they're kind of gonna use that technique because it's faster. 
but for somebody that's not gonna be a sub 10 score on this, you might wanna play and adopt with singles or just different technical approaches to get the work done. Um, obviously, there's also a mental component to this. So he's four minutes into the workout right now. You can see he still has the same type of rhythmic burpee where he does his little step up technique, gets his feet to the bar. He's standing almost all the way up, yep. gets his breath, lands on his feet, turns around, drops down to his burpee. And that's really the theme of what we're trying to do in here. Some other things that I think maybe could have contributed for Trav in terms of why he was able to do this. I think you can see in the background, all the people kind of standing around, keeping pace, watching him. When we did this both on Friday, he did Friday morning, then on Monday morning, he came in and he trains almost all the time in the morning, like around 9.30 to 10.30. No one in the gym, he's kind of doing it by himself. I think it's a little bit easier to not hold yourself accountable when it starts to get into like a suffering state, whereas all of these people are watching and it helps give energy to him and helps him remember and people are cheering, you know. Yeah, and they're his members. So they're people that he has to like set a model for to inspire, like to give them some sort of a, a motivational burst about what he's willing to do to push himself to this level, which I think is one of the reasons why his gym continues to grow and why these people trust him because they know what he's able to do, not just being a full-time athlete. I mean, he is a paid professional athlete, but he also has a lot of other stuff going on. And most people use that as excuses as opposed to figuring out like, how do you put yourself into the mind state to do it? And some of it I think is just, you know, making yourself accountable to it and putting yourself in that environment. So it might be something for people to consider doing a Friday night lights or doing an extra Monday night lights for people that want to do reattempts in your community to kind of give them some of that uh, motivational reason and community driven performance that, you know, it's really, if you look at the amount of total volume that they, that Travis has done in here, if I just sent this to you know a movement expert or strength and conditioning expert and said like, what would you say about somebody doing 240 snatches at 95 pounds at full speed in non-optimal yeah. positions and 300 burpees, all at intensity in a total of less than 35 total minutes? They'd probably say that A, it's impossible or it's super unhealthy. And I think CrossFit has exposed a lot of self-imposed limitations we have on what the human body is capable of. Not just Travis, but you know all the other high-level athletes that I coach and all the other notable athletes in this sport really are yes, redefining sir. what's possible in terms of metabolic capacity, structural capacity of the joints. And I think that is inspiring to other people that are less talented, myself included, to say like, all right, well, we can make our bodies much more capable specimens. So Trav, Damn it, Chris, you just went off the clock. I don't know where he is right now. So I think he's around round six, seven right now. I'll be able to tell if Chris frames back in the video. But again, you can kind of see this rhythmic burpee strategy. Now you can see a little bit more about the environment. There's probably like 20 or 30 people around watching. Everyone's cheering at this point. You can't hear the audio, but you know people are encouraging him. These transitions, in his earlier attempts where he finished the burpees, he's like, I need to get my hands on the bar much quicker. And you could see like, you know, right when he finished the burpees, everyone was clapping and yelling. And I think those types of um, environmental cues really help people push themselves a lot faster. Um, you know, some other things that probably go into is just like pride of being, an ath being a high level athlete. You heard in Trav's intro, he yes, did 10.04 and then he tried to convince me he was gonna be okay with that score and he wasn't gonna redo it. And I kind of just laughed and smiled because once you start to see the scores come in and you know they're prideful about what they do and when they see scores come in and they see other people do them in person, they know it's possible, then that all shifts their psychology and gives them a reason to kind of go and do this a second and a half time in the same day. So energy's picking up, people are cheering pretty hard. You can tell he's kind of hurting, so now there's a little bit of these extra breaks. That's a pretty quick pickup. I think yes, he's in round eight or nine. Come on, come on. We'll see here. On, this is nice and zoomed up on his face. What about when he quit that, that third time? Anything like that? Yeah, uh, so the third time he like he was about to actually do his next training session. So that was like four hours before yeah. this. Okay, so Trav's sprinting, he's about to finish. Let's watch the sprint finish and then I'll kind of address the, 
the second and half attempt where he stopped midway through it. So this strategy of burpees is kind of that double hop. It's way faster. He stays lower down to the ground. This is kind of what you need to do if you're sprinting burpees and what he would have done in 19.4. And that's obviously what he used on the last round. So super impressive. Now we're panning around, seeing the whole environment of people that were standing around to watch him. Nice little resting posture going on. It's pretty solid. Well done, Trav. It's awesome. So third attempt for Trav. Um, the one he yeah, the one he stopped in. So he did did his first attempt. Kyle Bernier, who's been his training partner for like the last month or so, moved down here, came in, did the workout in 927, I think it was, and Trav watched it. And then that in and of itself got him pretty fired up and upset. And he was like, I feel like I can go faster. I want to do it again. It was probably only two and a half hours after his first attempt. I don't know what his food situation was like between there. Um, he basically just put the bar down, started warming up, and then jumped into it. I had the split times of where Kyle was in that workout. And Travis was actually on his pace when he stopped, but he could just, he, he looked at me and just was like, I don't, I can't keep this pace. Like he just didn't have it at the moment. So I think some of that was probably a premature approach to get into it, but probably also a smart veteran play not to finish out the workout because had he done that and done worse, it probably would have broken his psychology and made this not possible. So. You know, I don't know how athletes come into making those decisions for themselves, but um, I think it was a smart move and pretty cool to see that he could do that and then come back and crush a workout like this. I did it. I did it. Sometimes you just gotta do a little mind over matter. I thought I was content with 10.04, fast forward. Monday. Four days. A minute faster. It just kind of shows what the mind is capable of doing. Because I mean, I'm not making excuses, but I was up at 12 last night and then 3 to 5 o'clock with one child wanting to put on his incredible suit and the other one wanting to play hide and seek at 3 o'clock in the morning and then both of them being up at 5 30. But no excuses, you just suck it up and you apply yourself to something like anything could happen. I mean, five days or three weeks ago, I wanted to quit in general and take a break. But Max goes, get it together or retire. And I think I just answered, I got it together. So. It's a wrap, you know what I'm saying? Your boy Project Pata in this thing, man. Hey, look, man, thank y'all for watching Train Think Tank YouTube channel. Y'all hit that motherfucking subscribe button, you know what I'm saying? So y'all go ahead, man. Thank y'all for watching the channel, you know what I'm saying? Hit that motherfucking subscribe button. Let it be known, let it be known, let it be known, you know what I'm saying? Pata.